Welcome to the de Havilland Aircraft Museum. In this day and age, we're very familiar with the idea of unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs or drones as we frequently call them these days. They get used for reconnaissance, they get used for aerial information, uh, they get also increasingly used not only for target practice but also as strike aircraft or strike vehicles as well. But a lot of people don't appreciate that the history of drones goes back a lot further than they might think. And today I'd like to introduce you to a drone from 1935. This is the DH-82 Queen Bee. So why did they build a drone in 1935? The answer is to use it for anti-aircraft gunnery practice. The way this worked is the plane would be automatically flown at reasonably high altitude, either from land or very often catapulted off a ship. It would then fly at a predetermined height and it would be used uh, with a streamer behind it for anti-aircraft gunner practice. Now you can imagine that not many of these have actually survived. Although this was intended to operate pilotless, this Queen Bee did have a cockpit and a full set of manual flying controls, so it could be flown like a normal plane. But when it was operated under radio control, it was a bit more restricted. The radio could control the rudder, the elevator, also the ignition and the throttle. Radio control was operated through this simple rotary telephone dial. Each number represents a specific function, left, right, close open throttle, etc. The radio signals operated pneumatic servos. Those servos received compressed air from a small pump mounted on the fuselage. There was a similar dial also mounted in the cockpit, so the test pilot could actually test the pilotless function. So how's it made? The fuselage is actually taken from the original de Havilland moth itself. It's therefore made out of plywood. That makes it relatively cheap. It also means that if you're using it in, at sea, it's got an element of waterproof about it. On top of those, uh, basic, on the basic fuselage, you've got the wing structures which were actually taken from the later Tiger Moth. So from a distance, it might look like a Tiger Moth aeroplane. If we look at the various controls, you'll notice the front controls are still there, although there are some extra dials that you might normally not expect to see. So this plane could actually be flown by a pilot uh, in the normal way. But behind me, we've got a second compartment. This is where the radio set lived. It's a valve operated radio set, obviously quite heavy, quite complex for its day, and it needed a wind powered generator in order to create the electricity to drive the radio set. In addition to the basic controls, the Queen Bee also had an automatic landing system. Uh, what this was able to do is sense when the aeroplane was near the ground or indeed near the sea, and at that point it would flare out and automatically land. And this was quite useful because in order to return the plane to ground, all the controller had to do was get it to descend until the ILS would automatically kick in. Of course, the other thing that could happen is you could lose control of your Queen Bee, in which case it would simply run out of fuel, eventually it would descend, and eventually it would safely land. So this is a landing site. Making use of that automatic landing system what the controller could do is sight where the plane was in order to bring it to the right attitude in order to get it to land at the same position. Very simple, very basic, but it got the job done. So what about the name Queen Bee then? Well, somebody has pointed out that there were so many different moths, some moth variants, that why didn't they call it the Queen Moth or something? 
Well, the queen bee is in charge of the whole hive and she's surrounded by others that do her bidding and they're called drones. So maybe this is the derivation of that actual word drone, meaning a pilotless aeroplane that can be used not only for shooting at, but maybe for more aggressive purposes as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this particular video. Do come along to the museum, check out our uh, opening, opening times, come along and you can stand this close to one of the few drones that's still in existence from 1935. If you like the video, do uh, share, share on social media, like and subscribe, but do check out our website, come and visit us at the museum, have a look not only at the Queen Bee, but also of other aircraft similar to it, such as the famous Tiger Moth. We'll see you at the museum.